Well, it has been a long time since I have made a video on this channel, but boy, is this one big news. Alice Scrolls Online is far from famous for good performance, good decision making, or good pretty much anything. It's one of those games that people bond to because they have enjoyed the content at the start and have remained with, myself included. I have always said that the combat in Elder Scrolls Online is pretty much as good as it gets for the era that it was made in. Unfortunately, the decision making of the company behind it is very, very different. Elder Scrolls Online is becoming increasingly well known for major lag problems, dangerous decisions that could significantly harm and are significantly harming the game, poor balancing, and of course, the famously enormous lag spikes, toxicity, ping breaks, etc. And all of this is sort of culminating at the moment in one fell blow to the PvP community of Elder Scrolls Online. Now, I have been with the game since beta, and I have seen the highs and lows of this game, and it's not the first time where the game has been criticised for any of those aspects that I've mentioned, particularly lag and poor decisions. But right now, there seems to be the ultimate collection of all of these falling upon the game at exactly the wrong time. This year was supposed to be the year of performance, a year where the game's performance was improved drastically so that lag was no longer going to be a major issue of the game. Well, that year has now passed and I have to say the game is laggier than it has ever been. Pretty much wherever you go in Cyrodiil is unplayably laggy, Imperial City is sometimes unplayably laggy at one bar populations, and Battlegrounds are fairly hit and miss as to whether they work, and this is after many, many years of progression towards fixing this. And I think I'd accepted this a long time ago, but I do believe it is time for the population of PvP and Elder Scrolls to accept that it is never going to improve. And it's a fact, it's been promised to me and to those other beta players for going seven years now that the lag will be fixed, that decisions will be taken into the players' hands and sort of directing them in a good direction. And it's just not happening. It's not going to happen. It never has happened. It's only really got worse or thereabouts. And I think, unfortunately, this is something we have to accept. But even outside of the lag, I do feel that the combat in Elder Scrolls, as I said, is great. It's well made. It's very thorough. It has huge skill boundaries. No matter what some of the wider public might try to tell you, the skill level that you can reach in this game is huge. But unfortunately, that is all limited by the balance of the game, and that has just reached its all-time worst. Now, many of you might be familiar with the patch uh, where Prox could crit initially, and this was a sort of one of the first patches where Prox really came into the game. Famous names being sort of Viper. Um, that would be the one most of you would know from that era. And essentially, it made it unsurvivable. Builds that could gank invisibly or quickly would, well, without any form of counter, pretty much guarantee that they could kill you. You could block it, couldn't really dodge it because you couldn't see it coming, couldn't predict it in any way, you couldn't outheal it. It was guaranteed death. Unfortunately, Zenimax realised this and after much public criticism, moved away from that model and pushed towards a kind of community approach where procs would be diminished in their value not eliminated and they certainly did keep values and on and off there were uh, patches where the procs were somewhat unbearable but they were still manageable and there were still builds out there that caused a lot of build variety a variety of sets that were non-proc and proc could be useful and each different class could benefit from different sets unfortunately during this year of optimization that Zenimax has promised, they've done quite the opposite. And what they've done, and I understand why they've done it, which I will go on to shortly, but what they've done is they have catered towards the casual population more and more. They want to make it so that experience and skill, etc., become as low a value as possible so that people on the forums who are relatively new to the game can feel like they're performing well. And the reason they've done this, of course, is that, well, really, the competitive scene of Elder Scrolls Online PvP has really diminished heavily. There are not many out there left. Certainly, as a PCEU player, I can name less than 30 names of true hardcore PvPers that still play the game. The vast majority are gone, 
And although new players have learned and got good-ish at the game, they're really not at the standard that I'd consider dangerously competitive, um, high skill, the sort, of, the sort of build that you come against and you think, right, I really have to try here to make sure that I make this work. No longer do they exist. And so Xenomax, accepting this from a commercial perspective, has sort of said, well, okay, why bother? We might as well cater to the people that are paying for our game. And in this case, that is the people interested in role-playing, quests, sometimes PvE, but even the endgame PvE scene has very much diminished in its value. And it can be easily seen from Twitch.tv or even the YouTube population. The videos that are most successful, the streams that are most successful, are ones labelled I completed Quest 46 in Elder Scrolls Online, and you think, well, okay, that's okay. And I don't criticise those people. I play many single-player games in my life, and I've enjoyed them. But unfortunately, in my view, it's not what an MMO should be. It's not certainly what a game that was originally designed to be a PvP game should be. And this patch is the ultimate disaster when it comes to balancing for that, because what they have introduced is sets that they believe eliminate Big ball groups. And they do. Oh my word, do they? So you've got Blight Seed, a deadly buster for any groups purging, spamming purge. Great set in my view. It has the ideals there. Problem arises in a sec. Hrothgar, aimed at killing people running huge resistances to mitigate the ability of people to just turtle up on high tanky builds that sort of brawl you down or that are just generally annoying with very little damage at all. Either way, great counter. But problem arises in a minute. And lastly, Dark Convergence, designed as sort of another version of the proxy debt bombing. An AoE ground that falls on the ground, pulls people in and does a large explosion to, you guessed it, nuke large groups. But again, a problem arises because all three of these sets are just as deadly against one person. And there's nothing you can do about it. Now, the prime culprit here is not, in fact, Dark Convergence, which most of the forums would love to tell you. It is Hrothgar. Because I can run on builds that are 1k resistance and take 20k Hrothgars, or I can run on builds that are 50k resistance and take 20k Hrothgars. And there is nothing I can do about that. Because when I have low resistance, the set's initial damage is so high that although it's not scaling based on my resistance. It's not getting a high tool tip. My resistances are not high enough to mitigate it. I take big damage. If my resistances are high, very high even, I'm now scaling that tool tip high. And yes, I'm going to mitigate a lot of that damage, but I'm still taking big damage. Now, there are various comments that the damage we're actually taking from Rothgar could well be bugged, but it seems so consistent now that I, I can't help but feel it is Xenomax's intention to make these sets stronger. And I've had this suspicion for a long while now, even prior to this patch, though admittedly last patch was very, very good, about whether Xenomax really wanted to make sets and builds and whatever that insta-kill without counter. You can't block it, you can't dodge it, you can't predict it, you can't heal through it. No counter exists to these sets. No matter what build you're running, you are in trouble. The only way you can avoid it is not be seen. And what do most casuals run? Well, invisibility or large groups. In either case, they're relatively okay-ish. But you see, the problem we have is that sets like Hrothgar, because they have no counter, we can't actually get around it. We are bound to die. And so all skill is eliminated from the game. It is for this reason that, with great regret, I have to say that I believe the PvP scene for Elder Scrolls Online is going to die in the near future. The combination of increasing lag problems, major competitive disasters, poor decision-making, poor balancing in terms of the PvP world, a lack of updates, I could keep going, but my point is that Elder Scrolls Online as a PvP game is about to hit its last legs. And I truly believe this. And this is coming from somebody who has 600, 700 days online time. That's not days of playing. That is online time. 24 hours times that is the amount of time I've played this game since beta. I've been committed to it as a full-time streamer, YouTuber, regularly on and off casually. I've enjoyed the game in and out. But I think the PvP scene is over. But there is a bigger reason and a good reason why that might not be so bad, because New World is coming. 
I've recently given New World a lot of criticism on my stream on the grounds that I believed it has a high risk of going pay to win and that generally the game feels like it's lacking content. But, and I say a very important but here, I recently tried the game and I believe it was sensational. I truly believe it is a masterpiece in terms of PvP balancing, combat style, everything. If you've ever been an old schooler who's played games such as RuneScape, or if you've ever played the modern games such as Elder Scrolls, which vast majority of my viewers would have, World of Warcraft, which many of you might have, it feels like a culmination of all these games. I can't think of a better comparison than combining old school RuneScape with Elder Scrolls Online. And as two of my favourite all-time games, I'm going to inform you all here today that I believe Elder Scrolls Online PvP is dead in the water, but that starting here on, I will become a regular New World content creator. And I will be making regular PvP videos, guides for beginners, guides for advanced players, montages, even build videos for this game so that I can help others get into this game who are PvP players and are feeling the same sufferings that I have in terms of Elder Scrolls today. Expect some videos soon. I've got builds, montages, etc. already recorded from the beta. They'll be coming in the next few days. And I really hope that many of you will stay with me for this journey into a new PvP experience and what I believe is a far better performing PvP game.